<laughs> Hi, how are you? Hey, good. It's so nice to see everyone. It is so nice to see you. I haven't ever got to talk to you face to face. No. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like I have. I feel like I have. Yeah, I know. We've talked before quite a lot, you know, PMing back and forth and emailing or whatever, but we've never like face to face. So this is awesome. I know. This is really good. Thanks. This is going to make my day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and mine too. And thank you for being here. I know it's sorry. I'm turning my phone off so I don't have all that distraction. Um, thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Of course. I certainly appreciate it. Okay, people are, are starting to come in. I'm just gonna go ahead and get, get started and they can join us as they join us. How's that? Sounds great. Okay. Unless you so, get the hold on. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to, um, I don't know that everybody knows who you are and they absolutely should know who you are. So could you give us like a condensed version of who is Mindy Abovitz? <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely. I'll, I'm going to just talk about my relationship to the drumming world and specifically the female drumming world. So, Absolutely. Um, it, I'm a drummer and in 2009, I really wanted to see us drummers getting recognition for playing. I think it might be, I think someone's. Uh, yeah, I'm muting everyone just in case. Um, go right ahead. It's really nice to see everyone, by the way. Um, yeah, so in 2009, I really just wanted to change the Google, the Google search results for the word pairings, girl drummer, female drummer, and woman drummer. Because back then there was um, just like girls in bikinis at drum kits when you searched girl drummer, female drummer, and there were search results like can girls play the drums, you know, Middle Eastern articles about is it legal for girls to play drums? And then very quickly moving into like Steve Gadd, um, Bonham, and just like, just overtaking with male drummers. When you looked for female drummers, I knew a lot of female drummers. I was one myself, I am one myself. And so I started coding and building a blog. And I called it Tom Tom, because I think that's a funny name that, re that refers to being a tomboy and obviously parts of the kit. Um, and I was hoping to illuminate with the name and with everything we do to the drum industry that we are not invited to the drums. We haven't been invited. So the name Tom Tom is also like, it's the name of a guy and we're playing this kit and it's a male name. Anyways, so that was 2009 and that was a blog and I used search engine optimization to try to make it so that anyone anywhere in the world searching female drummer would get back content that was relevant to us and us actually playing. Um, and that quickly turned into a website and then it turned into a print magazine, which was like insane to try to do a print magazine. But that was around 2010. And I thought if we had a print magazine, we can be less ignored. Like a website felt like, okay, you can type it in or not. But a print magazine felt different in that it was a tangible, you know, you had to like trash it or keep it. So it's an object. Um, and, uh, and I wanted it to look really nice so that the industry understood that um, we are important, you know, and, and at the time and now still today, the goal was to cover drummers who were drummers who are and drummers who are going to be so there was always a mix of like absolute no namers alongside, you know, Susie Ibarra and Cindy Blackman and Sheila E, which is like super fun for me to do. And then I'm going to wrap this up by saying, so I've been doing Tom Tom for like 11 years and um, almost 10 years now, myself and Phil Hood, who's the publisher of Drum Magazine and Dave Levine, who I'm sure you all know now, the guy who runs TRX Symbols. We started Hit Like a Girl, which is a female drumming contest it's online only. Um, and that was to flood YouTube with videos of drummers all over the world who play and to really kind of take over that arena. That was my objective was to really have women and girls put videos of themselves playing. Dave and Phil are like most of the guys in the industry where what mattered to them most then was who was the best and how can they show the industry like the next most up and coming you know, a female drummer who's just as good as fill in the blank. I'm bored by that. I don't feel like drumming is a competition. I just wanted to litter the internet once again with drummers playing. So it was a 
contest. It is a contest, but for me, it's just another group of women supporting each other and another way to have visibility of drummers. I could That's talk a lot. That is know. fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, and you have a lot to be proud of. You have a lot Thank to you. be proud of. We we all have um, a debt of gratitude to pay you because you, you are tra- well Thank you, you. you, you but don't. yes, but you but you are trailblazing for everyone, every one of us. And so and we appreciate it. And I've actually gotten to be in your magazine, which was a huge thrill for me. Thank you so much for that opportunity as well. So wonderful. It's, I wish we, I wish and hope that we cover everyone in this lifetime because everyone is deserving of it. You know? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And that's one of the things that um, I, I'm seeing so many girl drummer groups or, or drummer groups that are really focusing so much on like the female players now that are coming up. And so yeah. I'm thrilled about that. Same. I love yeah. Drummer Girls United. It's so exciting to me. It's like um, it feels like there's so much energy right now behind all of us and well-deserved energy. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. E- even, even during COVID, that was one of the things I was going to ask you. Um, you, you're a drummer. So do, are you part of a band or you, do you freelance, you play with lots of people or where do you play? So running a magazine was so incredibly hard and I had no idea how hard it was going to be that I actually, it actually slowed my drumming down significantly, which is ironic because I'm running a drum magazine. So <laughs> um, I had to make a decision very early on if I was going to be sessioning, touring, drumming or running a magazine. And I chose to run the magazine, which meant every ounce of my energy, brain, creativity went into figuring out how to monetize it, how to grow it, how to make it important. Um, So my drumming is like me listening to old stuff I wrote, me thinking, me tapping on the table, (laughs) me sitting at any kit that's near, but it's not a priority as it, it, it wasn't able to be. And I haven't been, and then I haven't been able to prioritize it. Like um, I had to pick between in the early days, I was touring with my band and with Tom Tom, and like peddling Tom Tom more than caring about my CD that I was supposed to be passing out. And my bandmates weren't happy with that. I had to slow touring down. And that was like, that was early. That was like 2011. So I get to watch you guys is how I drum now. I just watch. And then I'm like, oh, wow. I'm just like, I can't, you know, I, 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 maybe I'll go to a conservatory like at some point and be able to sit down all day and play again. That would be a dream. That's fantastic. So tell them uh, where can they find the magazine? So we have paused printing for the last year or so, but you can buy any one of the 36 um, past issues that we've printed on our website, which is shop.tomtommag.com. That's our shop site. Um, You can get there from tomtommag.com. You can download them digitally. You can purchase them in print. Shipping is expensive outside of the U.S. That's just a thing. Um, And But before we paused printing, we were available in all guitar centers, um, Barnes & Noble. Like that was was some of the work I was talking about that like took all of my brain power. Yeah. Was trying to figure out distribution. Um, And... Uh, and yeah, it was such an honor to be in GC, such an honor to be in Barnes and Nobles. Um, and we were also in Ace Hotels and I got us an airline. I got us in Virgin Atlantic Airlines for like a year, which was really exciting. Um, yeah, it was just like, how do we hype this as much as possible? It was like my constant question. Um, and But for now you can um, buy them on our shop and I, I love each one of them. So I can't recommend, they're themed, but if, you know, I just go for it. I go for a theme that you like, or I'd go for a drummer that you like, who's on the cover or get them all. <laughs> Fantastic. That's what I would do. Absolutely. So during COVID, have you seen, um, have you seen a dip in um, people um, reaching out to you as far as being wanting to be part of the magazine or wanting to be part of hit like a girl those things has it has it taken a hit or has people being at home uh, caused a spike and people wanting to be involved in these things 
I wouldn't, I would say that what I've noticed trend wise during COVID, it's given me more time to look around, to take a second look around. I feel like a lot of the female drummers that I know and that I don't know are really empowered and taking a lot. They're just, they're just like filled, they're filling the space, which is really lovely. Like Tom Tom was filling the space for a while and it like a girl and we were pushing. But now these women are filling their own spaces. And I don't feel like there's as much of a need for a magazine or, you know, the contest is a little bit different. Um, so that's been really exciting is to look at people's platforms and see them take on their own lives, watch the drum companies respect them as they should and endorse them and work with them. So that's been really exciting. That was not there a decade ago. And now you see these heavy hitters, medium hitters, like people just start, everyone's kind of got like a rumbling underneath them. Mm -hmm. um, we still get, I mean, all we do album reviews and we cover drummers. So we're always getting emails about that. I personally feel slowed down about pushing out the content because I see so much of it everywhere. Um, and I don't, I, I want to be here to be useful. I'm not trying to like, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of sitting back a little bit. And uh, one thing we did do an initiative we started with some of, you know, on this call is called Chops TV, which we started during the pandemic. And it was a way to keep folks inspired. Um, we highlight female drummers who are also instructors. They teach a mini lesson, we do a mini interview with them. And it's a way to kind of connect people further online, also stay inspired, you learn from, and then it's like kind of next level. Not only are we drummers, we're also educators, which the industry does, doesn't know, whatever. I'm always trying to show the industry like who we are and who we can be and what we have been and kind of shame on them for not paying attention. That's like my major goal. And CHOPS has been a little bit of an extension of that. That's fantastic. Pandemic. So um, I know a most people that are here and then we're going to have tons of people watching when it's posted to the YouTube video, but how did the whole hit like a girl thing come about? So I mentioned earlier, I started Tom Tom and I came out on the scene. I was, I was, I was pissed. I had a lot of anger and I wanted the industry to pay attention. And I wanted like society in general to pay attention, but the industry was, I was really targeted towards like um, just every drum company. And I would go to NAM and I would go to NAM with the magazine and I would walk to every, you know, to Mapex, to Pearl, to Gretsch, to every cymbal company, to every hardware company, to whatever, Hudson. And I would show them the magazine and ask that they take out an ad. And to be perfectly honest, at the same time we had Modern Drummer and Drum Magazine and not so modern drummer were the other magazines competing for the same ad dollars. Phil Hood, some of you know him, some of you don't, he runs, he used to run, he was one of two publishers of Drum Magazine. Mm -hmm. I think he thought here comes like this up and coming like shit kicker, I wanna collaborate with her rather than work against her, which he has done notoriously throughout the career of Drum. He'll basically like take in anyone young with a new idea. So he and Dave Levine in the background talked to each other, Dave Levine of TRX Symbols, and called me out of the blue. And we're just like, we want to start a female drumming contest. We want your involvement. The benefit for me was that these two men who are older than me and were in the industry for at least two decades when I came around, I thought they have every possible connection. They know everyone. They're going to introduce me to everyone. And I needed that. Um, and I knew they had like, I knew they had the ability to blow this up more than I could on my own. What they didn't have was an innate knowledge of what female drummers were not getting. They don't know what it's like to be a female drummer. So a lot of our partnership involved me saying, right, no, I'm not doing this with you if, if GNC drummers are not included or no, we're not gifting tiaras to the winners. And um, yes, we're, I'm not joking. And yes, we're doing an under 18 oh category and over 18 and no, you don't have to be the best to enter. And a lot of like, like, and here's how we're gonna grow the contest. We're gonna grow through ambassador programs where women encourage other women to join. We're gonna have only female judges. Now there's like a female judges, but like there's been a lot of principles that I put into place working with two men who have a cool idea, but had absolutely no idea how to execute it. 
And I really wanted to partner with these two guys who were able to show me the dirtiest, grossest part of the drum industry, but also I sat at the table with them and these other guys. So that was very helpful. So that's how Hit Like a Girl started. And it's gained a lot of traction. And Dave Levine is pretty much the like, he is like both Phil and I have had wavering energy to be able to put into the contest. Dave just keeps pushing forward. So I'm very grateful for him. That's fantastic. Yeah, I hope that, I, and yeah, I hope that explained, I hope that answered what you were. It did. And okay. this year is a special year. Why is that? Because it's our 10th year. It's a it decade. Is. And it's been, I mean, it's grown so much. It's grown into Asia and, and South America. It's such a cool contest. I absolutely love it. I love the judging. I love the industry judging. I love the eyeballs on the contest. I love, I love so much of it. And I love that there are folks that have been involved for 10 years now. That is wild. When you yeah. have someone who was a kid or who wasn't that great and she kept pushing herself. That's really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. And I know that this year I've been seeing some um, emails from David that there are going to be some new things in the contest this year that we've never had before. Can you talk anything about that or is that still under wraps? Um, are you talking, wait, um, no, let's maybe talk about that later because I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Okay, uh, no, no, okay, yes. But uh, I just thought that there was some, I, I, I know that you had said it's going into other countries and things like that and there's going to be I know that there were some uh, maybe weekly things or I couldn't remember what all was happening. Yeah, and um, one of the newer developments is that we are not just like a three month program. We're a year long program. We have the drum summit, which focuses on hand percussion. We've introduced beat making. We've introduced um, percussion and drum set playing. So all of that within Hit Like a Girl is just to keep everyone kind of part of one family, which we are anyways. Yes. Um, yeah. I love that. I absolutely love it. You guys are taking it in, in exactly the right direction because it, it feels so much more inclusive. Because like you said, it's covering so many more countries and it's covering so many more um, ways to play the drums. Because um, most times when you go, even in my group, most of the time when somebody is going to be posting video, it's going to be a drum set video or, or maybe a marching snare or something like that but you don't see a lot of hand drums or other kinds of things. So I love the diversity that you guys are bringing in. I think that's that's really right on. Thank you. That's so cool too, because when I first came on to the scene, hand percussion was relegated to women and nothing else like mm -hmm. Toka and LP. They were super happy to put a female drummer next to a, um, a hand drum, but they would never have put her at a drum set. So the fact that you're saying that is awesome. I love that reversal. Um, because I do feel like the drum kit has notoriously been a male instrument. So now it's about bringing all the pieces together and just kind of really showing where well, we've, we've all already been playing all these instruments and normalizing it even more. Absolutely true. So is there something else that you guys, you would like for us to know about your career or about TomTom Tom Magazine or about Hit Like a Girl that we can really um, get involved in? Mm. Um, it's so difficult to say. I feel like it's just been very exciting to watch everyone grow on social media. Um, I'm strategizing around a way to connect us all through social. We're about to launch a TikTok, which is just like, oh my God, there's just yet another thing, you know? Yeah. It's like, are you joking? <laughs> um, and again, I'm looking for a hole because when... Tom Tom started and hit like a girl started, there was a hole. So I'm always looking for a hole that needs to be filled to bridge the gaps between us, between us and the industry, us and society, you know? Um, I have really cool meetings with the industry now and they ask me very real questions about how to reach different segments of the female drummer population. And uh, I feel a lot of responsibility and I love that responsibility to talk to the marketing directors and the product development team about how to reach us. So I think that like, I would say if anyone has thoughts and ideas about where we're missing, like where are our blind spots in terms of connecting the female drumming community to the drum industry, to the larger music industry, and then to society as a whole, that's like what I'm most interested in is making it so that we can all play. We all feel permission to play, excited to play, and that we get the, the deserved attention once we've arrived. Um, 
so yeah, so I'm just really interested in like helping and filling a hole. So if anyone has thoughts and ideas around like, I haven't really been seeing um, any drummers from Mexico represented properly in our industry or whatever it is that you're seeing is lacking, that would be really exciting for me to work on. Um, okay, that's that's perfect. Um, before we hop off of here later on, uh, would you, in the chat, would you put how they could contact you or find um, Tom Tom Magazine or see what's going on with Hit Like a Girl, all of those little links, that would be really helpful. Yes, most definitely. Um, and, and just keep in mind, I've been doing this for long enough that I sometimes like lose touch of like what is really, really important. So feel free to just like take me and shake me and be like, we need you here. <laughs> or like, this is how have you not been doing this? Um, so that's important too, because I can hyper-focus on stuff I've been working on um, rather than see the bigger picture. And like so much has changed, really so much has changed. So um, it would be really nice if people want to do, ah, yay, I'm seeing such uh, friendly faces. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, let me know, be like, you know what, Mindy, you can uh, relax now because it's all good. Or you know what, Mindy, <laughs> this is a real big problem. And if you spoke to this and this person, it might be able to be eased up or whatever. And I will, I will definitely put a way to get in touch with me. That's great. I love that. I'm going to open it up to the floor. So if you guys um, have a specific question for Mindy, I want you to feel free to, to ask her. Is that okay, Mindy? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. You guys go right ahead. Email right there. All right. I'll, I'll say something. I, I, it's Kira. Hello, everybody. Hi. This is my first one. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> Mindy, like what I wanted to say is I feel like you are always on top of stuff. I feel like you are so like leading the way and you are really on top of um, up and coming drummers and issues. So I guess I want to know how, how are you? I feel like you're really on the pulse of upcoming people. So how, how do you do that? How are you manage, how do you manage your time to do that? Um, it is, it's all I do. So it's, you know, I was saying before you got on, I was saying that like, I don't really get a chance to drum anymore because I'm just basically like hyper-focusing on the industry and how it's been being shaped. Um, and I was also saying that it's just so cool with social media, watching people growing into pockets. So I'm trying to observe all the time like what is happening in the female drumming world. Um, I feel like I'm missing a lot, if I'm honest. I feel like I'm missing a lot. And, but people send me information a lot over email, they want me to know about someone or something that's happening, which is really great. Um, so I find out about that that way. I find out by just latently searching all the time through social, who's doing what, searching tags, you know, um, paying attention to the drum magazines, paying attention to Drummer Girls United, paying attention to, there's, there's a lot I'm missing. Um, but I guess how I know what I know is I've been just like hanging around this whole time. And when I find someone like I recently met Dorothea, when I find her, her, it's like so exciting to me. I think I found uh, Dorothea through watching, um, I'm spacing out on the platform right now. It's a massive drum Maybe drumio. drumio? Yeah, I'm like, it's a drum, right, drumio. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at drumio and reverb. I'm always looking at everyone, what everyone's doing um, and trying to just basically get the lay of the land of what's out there, but also trying to find out who that drummer is that's not connected yet. Like, where is she? And that's sometimes through friends of friends, or I'll just be searching on social or the email will land in my box. But I, I feel like there's so much we still need to, like, I'm, I'm also looking at Mirna who's to the right of me. I just feel like there's so much more we have to do as a community to bring people in and invite new people to play and all this this is just so much work it's so. fantastic yeah you're doing great good yeah. question by the way <laughs> good question uh somebody else go right ahead teddy you're gonna have to unmute oh, hold on a second Hi. all right uh you're gonna have to un oh there you go go ahead am i good now yeah 
good enough. Um, I sing and I write and I play the drums and I have an album coming out. I just got a record deal with The Orchard, Sony Music to distribute. And um, I was wondering if you review, it isn't a drum album per se. I front my own band, the, the act is Teddy Brunetti. And um, it's my second album. And they're gonna put out my first album too that I did 35 years ago in New York City with the okay. same producer I'm working with now. Do you um, uh, review? albums on your mat in your magazine we do we review albums that where a female drummer is playing the drums percussion or has produced any of the beats on the album um, reviews at tomtommag.com uh, or you can try to get in touch via facebook um, rebecca de rosa who's not on this call she has been heading up our reviews for a decade she's really good and she's got a team under her that that reviews for tom, right. tom. good question um, who else? Can I um, highlight Mindy's work again? Because <laughs> I was just telling Tammy that Mindy is like the, you know, the background person that's like serving everyone and not focusing on herself, but on everyone else. Mm -hmm. And like, there was that example that I was just mentioning to Tammy before the meeting that Mindy had this like Zoom meeting with a, a company in Colorado called Rups Drums. And I was in it. And through that meeting and how she was pushing people to like, help female drummers and minorities, I had someone that contacted me and asked me to like interview me. He ended up making like a whole like long interview slash documentary about, you know, highlighting music in different places in the world that I, like the place that I lived in and then how the transition was coming to here. So um, that's just like one example of Mindy's work. Plus, you know, the other things like, you know, almost a job that you posted the other, like, you know, a couple months ago. Um, that was another good opportunity. So I just kind of wanted to give yeah. an example of how fruitful this is. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, I think I'm obsessed with diversity. Like I'm looking back into what I enjoy doing and what I feel like I'm good at. And I'm really obsessed with all of our voices being heard and I can scan something very quickly and see who's missing from the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about um, bridging the gap and, and also, these days, I spend a lot of my time trying to figure out how people who have power can um, share and like use their power to bring new voices to the table. And like Rupp's Drums is a perfect example. He wanted me to speak about diversity. I'm asked to speak about diversity. I'm invited to talk about diversity at, in the background and drum company meetings as well. And it's a huge responsibility and it feels amazing when these people receive it and then you see that something happened, like what you're talking mm -hmm. about is like mm -hmm. so cool. And I just think it makes everything, I don't think, I know it makes everything better. Like when there's yep. more of us in the room speaking, playing, being creative together. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Good question. Thank you, Myrna, for, for that. Um, somebody else? Nobody? Should we all play? No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, everybody hop on your kids. Some people are in the studio, <laughs> jealous. <laughs> okay. Um, so do you have anything else, uh, Mindy? Um, any anything that you would like to add that we haven't covered? I'm thinking. Um, I like seeing everyone here. I know some folks. I wish I knew everyone. I'm sure you feel the way too, Tammy. It's just like so many cool folks so many. that we're connected with. Um, I just, yeah, I just invite everyone to talk to me whenever you want to. I'm on Facebook. I'm in the group, um, DGU. And um, wait, I think Dorothea's got her hand up too. Um, and yeah, just to, to talk to me if you want to ever about anything. Dorothea, did you have a question? Hold on, I think you're muted still. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So I am excited about being asked to be a judge, but to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about the contest and what it entails and how many weeks. Could you tell me a little bit about it? So yeah, so Dorothea and Tammy have both been asked to be judges in, um, hit like a girl contest. Um, Louise King, who runs Rhythm Magazine in the UK, she's heading up the judging department, but you guys will, so 
the way the contest works is it gets the um, anyone, anyone on this call, anyone anywhere who identifies as female GNC uploads a video of themselves playing. And then by popular vote, their videos get um, pushed up. And also industry judges weekly come in and pick their own choices. So by the end of the contest, you guys will, I think, have 10 drummers to vote and you will, to vote on and you will be given a sheet. And there's like at least 10 parameters of which you'll be giving a one to 10 vote on. Um, and then you'll tally up, you know, you'll give us back this Excel sheet, we'll tally it up between you and your other judges in that category. And that's how we determine who makes first, second and third place in those categories. So, so we don't do anything until the last, whoops, the last 10. Yeah, you've got plenty of time. And um, I encourage everyone to go on to hitlikeagirlcontest.com just throughout the contest and just watch some of these drummers. Because okay. by the end of it, you'll end up watching just like the finalists and semifinalists and all that stuff. But throughout the contest, it's just like mind blowing to see drummers from all over the world uploading their own stuff. And they're when does it start? Um, March, first. March, March 1st, 1st, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, March 1st. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> How do you um, enter the contest? What did you say? How do you enter the contest? You enter the contest by going to hitlikeagirlcontest.com and you upload a video of yourself playing. Um, this year, we're also, we're also partnering with companies, media companies and drum companies. We'll be ho hosting mini contests throughout so you can win little things along the way as well. I'm partnering TomTom Tom with Pisces, so we've got that going. Um, so just, I would say head to the hitlikeagirlcontest.com page and just like read as much as you can about what's happening so that you can get involved in as much of it as possible. And through your socials is how you can get the word out about your video, get some more upvotes. Um, the weekly judges, the weekly industry judges are often like, you know, a and R relations for um, thick companies, symbol companies. So they'll have their eyeballs on you too. So you want to get your video in soon. These are insider tips. <laughs> um, and you can look at back winners too and just back contestants for fun to inspire yourself. So Thank many, you. so many talented drummers, even ones that God. have not won. I've watched and my mouth is literally hanging open. Like I cannot believe what I'm seeing, especially younger, like really younger that can just tackle any song you would think is, way beyond the, the years that they've been alive. How, how are they possibly doing this? But um, I'm, I'm amazed every time I watch the videos. So this is going to be so, so much fun and a lot of pressure on the judges because it's going to be a, a hot contest. I'm telling you, I don't know how they've done it in the past. So it's going it to be really be fun. a hot contest. Year yeah. 10 is going to be a big deal. Like Annika Nealis was a contestant years ago, I think before. Like yes, she was. You know, so it's like fun stuff like that. And then Alexi Pavlati, I'm not so sure if I'm saying her last name correct. She's been on since she was like 11. It's just so fun to see people like really spread their wings. And this is, this is the contest that the industry is looking at. They're mm -hmm. interested in signing folks from here. Right. Um, we have a, we've yeah. had a lot of winners um, in our group, in Drummer Girls United. Um, and you know, Annika didn't win. She came in third when she, uh, when she entered. Can you I believe? Know, great. Yeah. So, uh, but we have had several, um, several from our group win the last few years. So I'm excited. I'm excited for all of that. Me too. It's been really fun. I've also done some lives. There's been some lives with um, past winners and contestants, both in Spanish and in English. I've been hosting the English ones. We'll probably bring that back on during the contest Fantastic. too. So you can meet some folks. Um, yeah, it's such a cool contest language is not a barrier for this contest mm -hmm. and it's really cool for all of us to get to meet people from all over the world like what's happening in Russia right now with drummers over there so wonderful yeah I love it well done yeah hey Mindy um yes. I was a judge at one point and I got to see some of the most incredible drummers one drummer blew my mind she was the best jazz drummer I had ever seen um, and I was just like, I hope she keeps going and keeps going. And sure enough, all of a sudden I saw her at Berkeley. Oh. All right. All right. She followed what she was supposed to do. So it was a really neat thing to, to see all these drummers. Amazing. Liz, was it hard to judge? Because 
both Tammy and Dorothea are judging this year. Um, do you want to? Oh, is it hard? Um, you bet. I love them all. <laughs> I know. I want to give them all A's. You know, they're all winners to me because they just their videos are well done, um, and they and it's just definitely serious. They're definitely serious, and they're just great, great players. And um, and I did my best to 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 judge them the best their their techniques, you know, their presentation. You know, just you can see you can see their passion in the instrument. Um, yeah, I find it I find it overwhelming. Like I was saying earlier, I'm I was the like this is a not contest contest. I'm the one of the three of us that's like right. This is actually just a celebration. But at the end of the day, people do have to win. <laughs> you do have to pick. It's hard. Huh. It is hard. Mm -hmm. But I love I love the part in the contest that it gets um, all of the the participants in front of industry leaders where they mm -hmm. would never have a, an opportunity otherwise, most of them. Um, even though they have the chops, even though they can play their tushes off, they might not ever have the opportunity to have somebody from Piesty watch one of their videos or some somebody at Vic Firth or whatever it is. Um, so this contest is so important for that reason. I agree. I agree. Um, that has been a big part of the contest from the beginning, obviously. And like incorporating the industry judges every week has been a part of the getting them more involved. They sponsor the contest. There's lots you can win along the way, like I was saying from these companies. So they're very involved. Um, that was part of weaving that in so that the industry is looking and seeing what's possible in the female drumming world. And I, they, they beyond know what is possible now. So the contest is just this like cherry on top now where yeah. really the talents are rising so much. Like you were saying, it's like just overwhelming now, but that's great. You know, we want them to think about female drummers all the time. That's what I want them to do. Well, you know what I've noticed too, and you've probably noticed this as well. When I went to the NAMM show, maybe four or five years ago, I would walk around the percussion area, you know, the huge area, and I would see, you know, just like peppered in a few females, but not a lot. But the last couple of years that I went, they're everywhere, like all over the percussion section. So just in a few years, I've noticed a, a drastic difference. Um, have you have you seen that as well? Have you seen I, the difference? I have, I have. I still see the work that needs to get done, but mm -hmm. I have seen that and it's really exciting. I also talk to folks all the time and I, I don't know if it's because I'm doing what I'm doing, but it's everyone's always telling me, oh, 60% of my students are female and or the only drummers that are making a wave on social are female. So that's what people are saying to me and I'm doing things that like you're saying, going to NAMM and seeing females there, seeing more and more of us online interacting like this. So um, I definitely notice a change. So like I said earlier, I look for what is missing now. So where, yeah. what do we need to work on? And, but this is very, very exciting. And the industry, I don't think questions whether or not we're here anymore. Right. Um, their uh, dedication to building instruments for our bodies, to marketing towards us, to thinking about us, the stuff I still work on with them, product development and, um, and obviously diversity within the female drumming industry is massive, obviously. So, um, and then later, once all of that's achieved, we can just let it all go and just be one big drum industry, which would be really nice, but uh, yeah. Yes, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. Well, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for all that you're doing, um, but Thanks. for also taking the time out and just being completely open and sharing all of this with us, because it means a whole lot to the women that are in the industry now and the girls that are coming up. It means a whole lot. It's exciting work. I love it. It doesn't feel like work. I'm happy to do it. If you think I could be doing a better job, get in touch with me or a different job, get in touch with me. <laughs> Um, I think I'm you're here. doing a perfect job. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here. Thanks for being here, you guys. It's really nice to see everyone's faces. Nice to see everyone's kits. Thank you all of you for uh, stopping by and everyone that's going to be watching on the YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, if you guys haven't um, 
haven't subscribed. I just opened it this week, but the reason I'm doing that is because so many can't join us live. So I want to share all these videos on the YouTube channel, and then you guys can share it on social media, just like what Mindy's doing, trying to get everybody in front of the industry and other people. Um, that's the reason I'm doing this as well. So I want you guys to be able to subscribe and then share it. And then more and more and more people will get all of this information and hopefully it will just continue that wave of change. Yay! Yeah, very much appreciated. <laughs> Killing it everyone. Okay, guys, love you all. And I appreciate you all. And thank you so much for everything that you do in part of the group and, and Mindy again. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Okay. You guys take See care. You guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>